We need to talk a little bit about Auburn here in a second. We're going to get into that because I, I, I want to know if you guys think they're frauds. I think Auburn are frauds this year. Uh, but before we do, we got to talk about Texas Tech because this team came into the season ranked in the preseason top 25. They came into the season in the conversation as one of the, the better teams in the Big 12. And now they're sitting here at 0-8 after losing by 15 at home to a West Virginia team that came in with just one win in the conference. Uh, I, I don't know what's gone wrong with this team, RC. I don't know if you have any opinion, but I, it kind of feels like this is one of the early examples of a team that's been victimized. Uh, I'm doing air quotes here, victimized by the – uh, by the NIL era. I, I think it's a little quick to say that. I, I think at times you just associate and have a level of expectation when you've been as consistent as that program has been over the last five or so years. So you just come into it, you know, you got they achieved a level where you just thought it didn't matter. They were mm -hmm. just going to automatically be what they've been these last couple of years where you plug and play. And this year it just hadn't been the case. You know, when you lose one of your better players and he goes to a to a rival, you know, in your own conference, it's hard to replace that kind of stuff. And, I, I, you know, I wasn't as big on him early as everyone else was. I just thought the parts were a little different. They weren't as big and athletic on the wing as, as, as we are accustomed to seeing that team be. And they're struggling bad. I mean, today, tonight was a battle of the basement and that wasn't even competitive. So, I, you know, I don't know where a win comes from. Um because as you know, in that conference, it's just brutal. I mean, there, if you're there not going to no West Virginia games. at home, uh, man, if you can't win at West Virginia at home, I mean, when, when, you know, when and who, I mean, that, that, that top half of that, I mean, top eight team is in that league of, is brutal. And, and I, I don't, I don't know. And that's the problem right there. You can't yeah. even say, you can't say top half, you, you <laughs> <No>. like <laughs> top nine, you know, like it's, it's, it's not even fair, you know, like you're trying to all of a sudden recover by going at Texas, yes. you know, Kansas at yes. home. It's just, uh, you know, what's wrong with them? I'll tell you, they're playing the teams league. That are, teams, <laughs> teams that got a little bit more talent than them. Um, what worries me is, you know, West Virginia getting 76 in their building. You know, Texas Tech that, that we're all used to, teams are scoring 45 in their building, you not, not go 76. There. It's really crazy that, that you see them in the, uh, in the Maui early on, and they, they look like world beaters, man. And um, whew, this, this league – the Big 12 can steal your confidence, and I, I don't know where they're going to get a win. They'll get one. You know, they have such a great home crowd, but, like, man, you start to lose that many in a row. Well, they're, yeah. they're starting to turn on them, man. Like, I, I, I see it in my mentions. I see it in the questions that we get in the chat. They're still going to turn out. You know, yeah. they're still going to turn out for the games. But You know, I'll, I want to ask you guys this, because it feels like – it feels like they went against kind of what their culture and their identity was when they brought players in. Right. When you think of Texas Tech last year, they had nine guys that were between like six, six and six, eight, who were all like 22 or 23 years old, who all had seven foot wingspans. And they just switched everything and they made it impossible to score against them. They just had killers defensively and they played that no middle defense and there was nothing you could do against them. And now they're bringing in like pop up Isaacs is a, is a fine player. But he's a freshman that's out there to, to shoot a bunch of jump shots. He's not a guy that's known for his defense. Now you got two bigs. You're rotating through Fardaws and Daniel Bacho. Those aren't guys that are going to be great in a uh, switch everything, no middle style of play. And I just, it feels like they brought in a bunch of guys to try to put together a roster as opposed to like continuing to develop a team and an identity and a culture. And all, all the buzzwords, Mac, those are all the buzzwords that people like me like to use, but it feels like they kind of went away from what they were. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's it's not the NBA where you can just pick players. They got to pick right. you too, right? You know, and and you know, you mentioned it before, and I, I don't know their business, you know, with NIL, but you know, Pop Isaacs, you know, he was a very highly recruited kid. But you know, you're right. Not only is he a freshman, but he's not necessarily the identity that you think of when you think of a Texas Tech uh, defensive player, at least. And so, um, you know, it, it's it's a little bit of shift from what we're all used to, for sure. Even a guy like Eliza Fisher getting in there is a, is a, you know, a highly recruited, highly touted guy. And it's just hard to win nowadays with freshmen. You can win with a lot of, you can win with young guys, but you better have a lot of experience around them. When you're counting on them for, you know, significant minutes, you know, multiple freshmen, significant minutes, they better be amongst the elite, and you know, in the, order for that to be. Even the elite freshmen, as you know, yes. some of those guys are going to, to the, the ignite and all the other stuff. Yes. So like, I'm not saying they're they're not elite, but even Duke, you know, Duke, for instance, has 
the best class in the country as a freshman, those guys are struggling. Struggling. You know, I mean, like they're winning games, but not in the way that, that we're all used to. And I say struggling. You know, it's they're still going to make the tournament. They're struggling that. for for Duke and who Duke is, but it's also right. worth noting like they have the top two recruits in the class. But the reason those guys are the top two recruits is because Scoot Henderson and the Thompson Correct. twins are not playing college basketball because those guys. And that's the way of life now. You know, for mm-hmm. for for college coaches, is they recruit that level of player. 